When I saw the reports of the U.S. government planning to investigate UAPs, I said to myself, what's a UAP? And then you read the fine print and it's unidentified aerial phenomenon. And I said to myself, that kind of sounds like UFO. But regardless whether we're talking about UFOs or UAPs, both of them refer to stuff happening in the sky and you don't know what it is, period. Okay, we can agree on that because that's what the U stands for, unidentified. If there's something in the sky that you later identify, it goes from being a UFO to an IFO, an identified flying object, and then you move on. Why should the government be interested in UFOs? Seems to me if something over our head could possibly pose a threat to us, to our safety, to our health, our economy, who are you gonna call? Call the military, the Air Force. I'm not surprised that there's military, governmental level military interest in trying to figure out what is happening in the sky among objects you can't otherwise identify. No problem with that. Allocate some portion of the Pentagon budget to identifying them. People have come to equate UFOs with aliens, which is a curious equation in our brains because it goes something like this. There are lights in the sky doing something I've never seen anything do before. I can't explain it. I don't know what it is. Therefore, it's a visiting alien from another planet. So what we tend to do is explain away our ignorance with aliens. Now that's just intellectually lazy. Aliens can't have done all of that. <laughs> it happens on many levels. The people who see the pyramids and rather than credit the African culture who created them, because you don't know how somebody did it thousands of years ago, you can't figure it out and you're not giving them the intellectual credit for having accomplished it. So you say, aliens helped them. It's a common sort of fallback position. What I would say is, as a scientist, you learn to embrace the unknown. You, uh, you encounter something you don't know what it is, I want to find out more. And you don't assert that you know what it is after you've just admitted you don't know what it is. You don't know what it is, let's perform more experiments. Let's get better data. Let's keep investigating it. So I don't have any problems continuing to investigate stuff in the sky. A huge 200 foot diameter balloon, that's two thirds the width of a football field. It's a big ass balloon up at 60, 70,000 feet, well above the civil aviation flying zone, which is basically sea level up to about 40, 45,000 feet. Well above that, so it wasn't in anybody's way, but we didn't put it up there, who did it? Now there are treaties that control who gets to fly over your airspace. You can't just take a plane and fly over anybody's country that you choose, not legally at least. And so this is what made the space race of 60 years ago so interesting, geopolitically interesting, because the satellites were not flying over your airspace, they were over your space space. And there was nothing governing that. And plus you can't maneuver satellites to go around your national borders. It doesn't work like that. The, 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 the gravitational physics doesn't allow that. So you can have satellites over people's countries. Yeah, and nothing anybody can say. You can even park a satellite over someone's country in a geostationary orbit, they're called. They orbit so far away that the time it takes them to complete one orbit around the Earth equals the time it takes Earth to make one rotation. So it appears to hover over the same location on Earth. You do that too. We've been doing this for 60 years, ever since basically the early 1960s. So balloons are kind of a budget way to try to get information from the ground, but you need permission to do that. Otherwise, you're gonna get shot out of the sky, which is exactly what Navy, was it Navy or Air Force jets did to the big balloon that floated across the United States, took a tour, from coast to coast, it was shot down by a fighter jet with a missile, which is a little odd for me. I think we might have a better way to take out a balloon. Ultimately, you're really just popping the balloon. You're popping it. And a missile feels like overkill for that. 
And maybe we should develop a new kind of weaponry, weaponry just for popping balloons. Uh, that would be interesting and uh, cheaper than surely whatever it was they used to shoot it out of the sky. Maybe we could have shot it down over Alaska, but you want to learn about it, okay? You see something you don't understand, you say, enemy, kill it, kill it, or say, hmm, if I watch this, and let's say it is your enemy, I'll see what the enemy might be up to. Try to gather as much information as you can. So that's, that's scientifically sensible, but could it have been carrying a payload that is dangerous? Possibly, to so get more information. Definitely, all good. And by the way, about a thousand or so weather balloons, between 500 and a thousand weather balloons are launched every single day. So there's stuff floating in our atmosphere all the time. And they pose a danger only when they're, if they're high, they're not, but if they're lower, that's a problem. We try to monitor that. What's good about a weather balloon, you, it goes up and you can bring it back down and it, it sends you back data. But we have satellites now. So weather balloons are not as critical as they once were, given how many satellites we have monitoring the conditions on Earth. So, uh, what do we have now? We have some other floaties coming in. You know, I don't see why the, this will ever end. Uh, but it'd be nice if we had a good military response to it. Ideally, you find a way to capture it without harming it. Then if it's some interesting technology, you reverse engineer it or the like. Some of these, we couldn't figure out what it was. I think the military said, we don't know what they are. We shot them down and it's scattered over a forest or the tundra or the frozen in the winter. We got to find out. And people heard the government doesn't know what it is. Whether or not they do know, they said they don't know. And there again, it was, it must be aliens. If aliens had a, a spaceship that crossed the galaxy and came to Earth, and all they're gonna do is put a few balloons out in the atmosphere? Really? That's their highest tech thing they've got? I kind of was hoping for a higher tech aliens we might encounter. I think it's important to resist the urge that just because we don't, haven't figured out what it is yet, that it must be aliens from another planet. Carl Sagan laid it out simply by saying extraordinary claims requires extraordinary evidence. And that's, not, that's a pretty simple edict to follow. And so, yeah, I'm not worried we're getting invaded by aliens. If we were, you wouldn't need Navy pilots or congressional hearings to establish this. We've got six billion smartphones in the world. We can crowdsource any possible alien invasion. And th those videos would be viral overnight. Maybe not as viral as cat videos, but... <laughs> Alien spacecraft coming, it'll be up there, okay? And then we don't have to go to Congress to get them to tell us whether this is actually happening. And that's what's up with that. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up.